Busting Lies, and I am your host, Ken Kenyon. And on today's show, we got something real good for you. Are your emotions sabotaging your relationships? So, let me give you this story. And so, this story is about one of my clients who before, we used to say things like this. So, I would, we, would, we would coach, but she was dating. And during the date, things would trigger her. Things that the other person would say would trigger her to getting upset to like, for instance, if the person said something that was different politically than her viewpoint, she would be like, well, you know what? Why you got to believe all that? I'm not believing that. And I'm, you know, you know what? They're oppressing people. And, and basically the guy was like, well, I'm just simply saying my opinion and she would get triggered thus she would wonder why the relationship wouldn't move forward. And so a lot of times when you're in a relationship or you're trying to get in a relationship, based on her emotion, most she got triggered. And then what happens is, what comes next is, is because she feels like she got triggered, many times we feel like because we get triggered, we go into what I call either protection mode or defense mode or attack mode. Protection mode, defense mode, or attack mode. Now, one of these modes, because when we hear something, we internalize something that does not necessarily resonate with us or is in alignment with our belief system, we feel like we have to jump in one of these modes. And because we've been doing it so long, we feel like it's the way we should do it. So you go into protection mode. Protection mode is you are protecting yourself. So a lot of times you don't say anything. So you feel like you got to shut down, close down, close down around your beliefs. So you don't communicate at all. Defense mode. Defending mode is that mode where, where you feel like I have to defend who I am based on my beliefs. So you begin to defend yourself. Well, I believe this because it is. I believe this because men are this way, or I believe this way because this is what happened to me. And then, and then when you defense mode, it leads to lack of communication because now when I'm defending myself, I'm covering up. I'm covering up. I'm co I'm jabbing. I'm covering up though. Okay. So, but I'm defending myself. I and then the third type of mode is the attack mode. Attack mode is when I'm like, okay, forget all that. I'm about to kill your ass. You know, I'm about to come at you right now because I don't, because honestly, I'm about to attack you. So we go into one of these modes. And then, but, but when we go into the mode though, what happens is it comes across like we can't manage our emotions. And so... When this female told me, she said she went out on a date and the guy started talking, sounding like an old boyfriend, and she said she instantly went into attack mode. I said, well, do you understand what's happening? I said, number one, there's two sides of your brain. You have your pain brain, okay, and you have your power brain. Your pain brain is the part of your brain that reminds you of everything you've done in the past or been through in the past, everybody you've dated, the things that went wrong, the things that look like things you don't like. Your pain brain's whole idea is to protect you from pain, but it reminds you of the pain first. So when it reminds you of the pain, it reminds you of the stuff that's happened, but now it's trying to, it's trying to protect you, so it reminds you, it's like, don't do this. Don't date that fool because that reminds me of something that I've seen before. But your pain, your power brain says is the power brain is the part of your brain that says, you know what? I'm okay with me no matter what happens. Whatever I learn from this, it's cool. I'll take it. I'll learn from it. If it goes somewhere, fine. If it doesn't go anywhere, fine. All right, but I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to love me and I can be myself regardless. So I don't have to attack them. I don't have to defend myself because at the end of the day, I love myself. And then I don't have to shut down. It's okay for me to speak my truth. Okay. And so where is, so I told her, I said, you're speaking out of your pain brain because you don't know how to manage your emotions. 
And I said, so let, I said, but the thing about it is, let's go over what happens when you don't manage your, your daughter. I said, because you're not going to get the relationship you desire because you cannot manage your emotions. You don't know how. And I said, so let me go over. And so on another day, I probably will tell you how to manage them. But on this day, see somehow, but this day, I'm just going to tell you what happens when you don't manage them and what's happening in your relationships. But I got to tell y'all something. Recently, I was, I'm a member of this cigar bar. All right. So recently, the owner of the cigar bar said something to me that I didn't like. Okay. And I felt like it had, and I could have been wrong, but I felt like it had a racial tinge to it. All right. Now, my, one of my good buddies, my man was with me and he said, dude, when the dude said what he said, he said, it amazed me how you handled that. I said, because the truth is when I was younger, I didn't know how to manage my emotions and that would have been a terrible situation. But because I know how to manage my emotions and because I realized that the end goal is not me getting back at him, clapping back at him based on what he said. The end goal is to be able to hang out with my guys so I don't want to get kicked out. So there's some things. So I thought about it. I was like, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what he thought, okay? And I don't even go into what he said. So, but I want you to understand something. I'm going to tell you what happens to you when you're not willing to manage your emotions because there are so many people out there who will not have the relationship of their dream because they are unwilling to manage their emotions. So I wrote things down. I said, when you, what happens when you're not managing your emotions? Number one, you run people away from you and they'll never tell you why they ran away from you. See, when you cannot manage your emotions, and I got a surefire technique on how to manage your emotions when you get angry, how to get when, when you get upset, all of those things. And so when you don't manage your emotions in a relationship or in a dating scene situation, the person runs away from you, but you never know why. They distance themselves from you, but you never know why. And so what happens is, is when you can't manage your emotions, when you're on 10 all the time, but you see it as, Listen, what I just say, you, you see it as either defending, attacking, or preserving, okay, or isolating. And so what, what, I'm, what, what I want you to understand is this, is that, look, y'all, one of the things I want to tell you is if you begin to look at it like and, and understand how to begin to ask questions, how to begin to ask calibrated questions, in relationship situations, because a lot of times y'all people say stuff and it's not what they said that pisses you off. It's how you internalized it. It's what you thought the meaning of it was. It's, you, it's what you thought they meant by what they said. And the truth is, have you ever been around somebody y'all? You know what I'm talking about. And then the person says, you now you said such and such. And the person says, that's not what I meant at all. And because you never asked calibrated questions, you never figured out what they meant. Thus, you, 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 what you did was attach emotion to what you thought they meant. And then you begin to go in, you begin to go in, go off, go off, whether you're attacking, defending, whatever it is you're doing. And you realize at the end of the day, you're like, damn, I feel like a fool because that's not what they were saying at all. And so what the other person did with the other person, they formulated an opinion about you already because you don't know how to manage your emotions. The second thing that happens when you don't know how to manage your emotions is this. You don't attract the person into your life that you want to. So we're doing a class called Manifest Your Life. And in the class, we're talking to people about how you attract the people that you want. Because the thing is, people either are attracted to you or repelled by you based on your personal brand. And so I teach people how to develop their personal brand so that they can attract the right person. And the truth is, y'all, when you emo your emotions are out of control, you can't attract the person that you want because the messaging that you're putting out. And so, y'all, I've been developing this program. I'm gonna get the title right soon. But I, I'm the only one out there who's going to have this program. 
And the reason why I know it is because I've been teaching branding. If I'm a branding expert for a long time, I just used it for relationships. And what I did was, because think about it, we buy brand names. Every one of you buy name brands. You buy certain shoes. You buy certain clothes. You buy Nike. You buy George. You buy certain cars based on the promise of that brand based on the promise, the messaging of that brand. Do you know every human being, even in dating? I told my wife this morning about this new program I'm putting together. I said, you married me because of my personal brand, because of what I stood for and what I stood against. And she was like, damn, I didn't even realize. She was like, damn, I just said, damn. She was like, but that's so true. So I'm gonna teach people how to develop their personal brand, their brand to attract the people that they want. Y'all, I'm going to develop, I'm going to start offering at the beginning of the year. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take people, um, and I'm only going to take a few people. It ain't going to be the cheapest class in the world, but it's going to be so good. So I'm telling people, listen, if your emotions are out of control, you can't attract the person that you want. And part of the law of attraction is, is this, your emotions are the barometer to tell you how close you are to getting what you want. How close you are to manifesting. Y'all, you ever, okay, now y'all don't believe me? I'm gonna give you some real stuff. And, the, and science doesn't contradict, contradict the Bible or anything spiritual. You ever thought about something? You focus your attention on it or thought about a person, and all of a sudden that person popped up. You're like, man, I was just thinking about you the other day, and you popped up. Well, your energy, emotions are nothing but energy in motion. Every single human being is a ball of energy. And what happens in energy is this. Energy is ne neither, neither uh, created or destroyed. It is transferred from person to person. And so what happens is when your energy level is high, high emotions, positive emotions, excitement, exhilaration, you attract everything on that vibrational wavelength that energy, but by the same token, if your energy is negative, despair, grief, sadness, and I'm not saying we all, sometimes in our life we're gonna be sad, but you can't stay there because you begin to attract things that are in that environmental frequency. And so, and so what I'm saying to you is this, is, you cannot, until you manage your emotions, because the emotions are the barometer. It's like, it's like the car is the gas. Let's say, let, let's say, what, like, it's like, it's like you driving a car. The emotions are the gas that goes in the car. You see what I'm saying? And so, if you're attracting something and it's coming towards you, and like a car is the thing that you desire, it's coming towards you, the person that you want coming towards you, and your emotions are the fuel in the car, but when you run out of fuel in that car, it can't get all the way to you. It can't get all the way to you, for real. And so, you can't get the manifestation of the attraction that's coming to you because your emotions are not on the, you didn't put enough emotions in the, in the tank. Your frequency is too low. And that's why I tell people, you gotta be able to manage your emotions. And if you can't manage your emotions, you can't attract the person that you want. Okay, can't manage your emotions, you can't keep the relationship you got. If you can't manage your emotion, you can't get something else that you want, okay? It's just, it's science, y'all, and it's spiritual. And so what I tell people is, I'm like, look, you ain't gotta believe me. You ain't gotta believe me. But let me tell you this right here. Why did why do they say misery loves company? Because they're on the same emotional wavelength. Why do miserable people always seem to find each other? Because they're on the same emotional wavelength. Why is it that me, a positive person, I can't hang out with miserable people? Because they're not on my vibrational wavelength. I only hang around people in my, in my who are on my wavelength, who are on my frequency, my vibrational frequency. Oh, I just had an idea for my program, y'all. I got to write this down. Oh my goodness okay 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 i had to write this down because this right here gonna be deep okay all right all right hold on i had to write it down sorry sorry y'all and, and i did i just got ahead the idea sometimes and y'all you know when you get old like me you gotta write stuff down anyway i get back to the point i'm putting this all in my program and as i'm teaching it to you guys i'm adding things to the program it's going to be so dope i you know i believe that i can help you find the person of your dreams 
or they will be attracted. I believe that. All you got to do is be willing. Most people are not willing to do the work. They just not. They just not. And I'm going to have examples of people in there who were willing to do the work and what they got. I'm just period. All right. Number three. When your emotions, when you can't manage your emotions, you can't grow beyond where you are. You become emotionally handicapped. Okay. Now think about what I'm saying. I remember Milani said something. My business partner said something. We were teaching a relationship class. She said something so powerful one day that I just like, I almost punched through the screen. She said that when you have significant trauma in your life, say as a kid, somebody molested you or somebody told you something, just significant trauma. She says, your body continues to grow physically, but you cease to grow emotionally. Cease to grow emotionally. And because you cease to grow emotionally, you become emotionally handicapped even though you grow physically. And so when you grow physically, you don't, and, and think about that for a minute, y'all. Um, um, and, and I'm just, I'm just saying you grow physically, but you become emotionally handicapped. And y'all, all I'm saying is, is look, we've got to be able to manage our emotions, but most people don't want to manage their emotions. They don't care about that. All they care about is I'm going to give it to you the way I give it to you. And then I say, but how's that working out for you? See, this is, I'm going to teach you something real quickly. And then I'm going to get to some of these comments. I'm going to teach you something. We, as a people, as people, we get so caught up in what's right and what's wrong. What's right and what's wrong. The truth is, y'all, what's right for me might not be. I'm not talking about you go out and kill somebody. That's wrong. I'm talking about what you believe. Some people say, well, that ain't right. Well, that's See, in some relay, and I say, get out for that. I'm coaching a couple right now. Me and Melania are coaching a couple together. And I told them, it's not about right or wrong. It is about, is it working or if it's not working? See, when you approach things, because some couples, what me and my wife do, some couples would never do it that way. They would never do it. But we say it works for us. It helps us stay together. It works. Like, when, I'll give you a prime example. When we buy something that comes into the household, like we'll buy something. I'm not putting it together. My wife will sit there all night and put it together. That's just like some men like, man, I got to put that together. I'm not me. I'm not putting nothing together. My wife will put it together because that's what she does in our household. Some people might find out, might think that that's not appropriate. But for my household, it's appropriate. We don't get caught up in what's right or wrong. You're looking at other relationships and you're projecting. You're thinking mine has to be like that. The truth is absolutely not. It's okay to model somebody's relationship. But it's not okay to mimic their relationship. It's okay to model, not mimic. Some people want to be just like them. Forget being just like them. Instead of looking for an example, be the example. Be the example. We did, I established the Grand Canyons a long time ago. You know why? Because me and my wife might say anything around this house. Say anything to each other, but we love each other. And we, that's just the way we communicate. Some couples come to us and say, I wish I could say, I wish I could talk like that to my husband. She was like, I wouldn't have it any other way. But that's not, we're not looking for an example. We're look, we are the example. And we look at like this. We're looking for models, things we like to, but we're not looking to mimic anybody. And until you are willing to grow, until you're willing to get un, 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 not handicapped, emotionally handicapped, look. And so until you have been taught how to manage them, all right, been taught how to manage your emotions, because what happens is people, a lot of times, I went into it at the beginning of the uh, of beginning of this live on what what they feel when they when they can't manage them. They feel like they're defending themselves, protecting them. They feel protecting themselves, defending themselves, or they're attacking someone else. And because they're in those three modes, they don't manage their emotions. But there is a tremendous, there is a specific way to how to how to do this. And y'all, my wife would tell you, I'm I am good at it now because before I used to just fly off the handle. I mean, I used to just have, I feel like I had an anger problem, which I did, I admit it. But now I know how to manage my emotions because I don't get caught up in what that is. I'm, I get caught up in number one, what is my goal? Okay, what is my goal here? Number two, is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to attack, defend, whatever with this particular per person? Sometimes y'all, it ain't even worth it. We just want to feel better. And that's just it. If, if it doesn't matter, you know, the 555 five, five rule. 
If it don't matter in five years, it ain't gonna matter in five days, so I ain't gonna give it five minutes. That's it. Five, five, five. If it ain't gonna matter in five years, what they say. It ain't gonna matter in five days, so I'm not gonna give it five seconds. I'm, I'm doing a class about personal branding, showing people how to develop their own brand so that they can attract the person of their dreams. Because many of y'all, you, you have a personal brand. Everybody has a brand. Everybody, whether you whether you created it on purpose or whether it had, had brand is nothing more than the perception that people have about you. It's a mental imprint that others have about you. You all have a mental imprint about Rolls Royce, a mental imprint about Bentley, a mental imprint about Costco, Walmart. They are all brands. You're a brand too. You just never take control of your brand. So I'm the first person, I'm a brand expert. I market, I've been doing it for years. Been on QVC, Home Shopping Channel, been in magazines around the country, I'm, I've been on reality shows because I know how to brand stuff. I know how to brand. Now I'm just transferring it to relationships. I'm, I'm the first person that ever did that, I think. I'm pretty sure I've been researching it for the whole week, last week. Nobody else out there is doing that. Nobody, I can't even find information on it. So I'm the one that's going to do it. And I'm gonna show you how, cause y'all, everything is about brand. That's why you on my call right now on my live, because my personal, my brand attracted you. My brand ain't for everybody. I cuss, yeah, I'm loud, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I want only the ones my brand attracts. That's why I love all y'all, okay? I'm not trying to get the ones that my brand doesn't attract. What we're trying to do is, well, here's where you make the mistake. You attempt to convince people to approve of your brand, to like your brand, instead of finding the tribe of people or person who already approves of your brand. I'm not convincing you of anything. I'm just authentic and putting it out there. I'm refining my brand. So now that I can attract the person who wants that brand. You feel me? Does that make sense, y'all? If you're interested in showing, excuse me, showing you how to attract that person of your dreams, how to manifest anything. We did a, we did a three hour masterclass. And I will give you, not only if you buy it, I will give you, I will give you one hour of coaching for free. All right, that's $300. I'll give it to you for free, all right? So look, if you're interested in that, inbox me. Interested in that, inbox me. So, your brain. Look, y'all, we'll get into it, but that's what it is today. Um, I'm gonna put that out there on my site. I'm gonna put the link if you're interested in that class. Uh, I'm going to put the link and you can go get it or inbox me, whatever it is. But y'all, if y'all are interested in that class that's coming up about developing your brand, let me show you how to do everything from your profile to getting your emotions in check. It's a comprehensive thing. It's going to be 12 weeks, three months. It's going to be 12 weeks and it, and it ain't the cheapest thing, but it's worth it. That's why I don't want but a few people because I'm going to delve in. Look at everything you do, everything you're doing from the pictures you post to the messages you put out there, to the people you meet, and to the places you go. Everything. I'm going to dig up in your life. But you going to attract the one of your dream. And I got a testimonial about that too. It's got to be willing to do it. It's going to be a three-month thing, and I'm going to go personal with it. All right? All right. I'm, gonna look, I'm looking for 20 people for three months. I don't know more than 20 people. But uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. And when that comes, we'll do that. All right? We'll do that. But other than that, y'all, if you're interested in the Manifestation Life class, this Law of Attraction is powerful. We're doing our master class. Doing the master class for, um, for half price today. And I'm going to give you an hour of coaching, so you can't beat that. All right, y'all. I'm out. I'm done. That's my time. Hope y'all having a beautiful day. I'm Ken Kane, the host of Love, Lust, and Lies. And you guys have a wonderful day. And until tomorrow, remember, every journey starts with one step. Take yours today.